Angles The Angles were one of the main Germanic peoples who settled in Great Britain in the post-Roman period. They founded several of the kingdoms of Anglo-Saxon England, and their name is the root of the name England. The name comes from Anglia, a peninsula located on the Baltic shore of what is now Schleswig-Holstein. The name of the Angles may have been first recorded in Latinized form, as Angliae, in the Germania of Tacitus. It is thought to derive from the name of Theria they originally inhabited, the Anglio Peninsula, Angel in modern German, Angel in Danish. This name has been hypothesized to originate from the Germanic root for narrow, compare German and Dutch ang equals narrow, meaning the narrow, water, i.e., the Schlei estuary, the root would be ang, tight. Another theory is that the name meant hook as in angling for fish, in reference to the shape of the peninsula, Indo-European linguist Julius Pocorni derives it from ang, bend, sea ankle. During the 5th century, all Germanic tribes who invaded Britain were referred to as Inglisk, who were speakers of Old English, which was known as Inglisk, Inglisk, or Anglisk. Inglisk also goes back to Proto-Indo-European h 2 ang, meaning narrow. In any case, the Angles may have been called such because they were a fishing people or were originally descended from such, so England would mean land of the fishermen, and English would be the fisherman's language. Gregory the Great, in an epistle, simplified the Latinized name Angliae to Angli, the latter form developing into the preferred form of the word. The country remained Anglia in Latin. Alfred the Great's translation of Erosius's History of the World uses angel sin, kin, to describe England and the English people. Beth used angel folk, folk, also such forms as Engel, England, the people, England, and Englisk occur, all showing I mutation. The earliest recorded mention of the Angles may be in Chapter 40 of Tacitus's Germania written around 1898. Tacitus describes the Angliae as one of the more remote Swibic tribes compared to the Semnons and Langoberti, who lived on the Alba and were better known to the Romans. He grouped the Angles with several other tribes in that region, the Riudini. Aviones, Verini, Eudoses, Suarini, and Newtones. These were all living behind ramparts of rivers and woods, and therefore inaccessible to attack. He gives no precise indication of their geographical situation, but states that, together with the six other tribes, they worshipped Nerthus, or Mother Earth, whose sanctuary was located on an island in the ocean. The Eudoses are the Jutes, these names probably refer to localities in Jutland or in the Baltic coast. The coast contains sufficient estuaries, inlets, rivers, islands, swamps, and marshes to have been then inaccessible to those not familiar with the terrain, such as the Romans, who considered it unknown, inaccessible, with a small population and of little economic interest. The majority of scholars believe that the Angliae lived on the coasts of the Baltic Sea, probably in the southern part of the Judish Peninsula. This view is based partly on Old English and Danish traditions regarding persons and events of the 4th century and partly because striking affinities to the cult of Nerthus as described by Tacitus are to be found in pre-Christian Scandinavian religion. Ptolemy, writing in around 150 AD, in his Atlas Geography, 2.10, describes the Swidboy Angeloi, Latinized as Suevi Angeli, further south, living in a stretch of land between the northern Rhine and central Elba, but apparently not touching either river, with the Swibi clang over on the Rhine to their west and the Swipic Semnons on the Elba stretching to their east. These Swabi Angeli would have been in Lower Saxony or near it, but they are not coastal. The three Swibic peoples are separated from the coastal Chaussee, between the EMS and the Elba, and Saxons, east of the Elba mouth, by a series of tribes including, between the Vaser and Elba, the Angri Varii, Lacoberti, probably another reference to the Langoberti, but taken by Ptolemy from another source, and the Dulgubnii. South of the Saxons, and east of the Elba, Ptolemy lists the Auranoi, Latinized as Virini, and probably the Virini, and Teutonori, which either denotes the Teuton men, or else it denotes people living in the area where the Teutons had previously lived, whom Ptolemy attests as still living to the east of the Teutonori. Ptolemy describes the coast to the east of the Saxons as inhabited by the Ferrodini, a name not known from any other sources. Owing to the uncertainty of this passage, much speculation existed regarding the original home of the Angliae. One theory is that they or part of them dwelt or moved among other coastal people, perhaps confederated up to the basin of the Zala, in the neighborhood of the ancient canton of Inchelin, on the Unstrut valleys below the Kifhauser Kreis, 
from which region the Lex Anglorum et Warinorum Hacatheringorum is believed by many to have come. The ethnic names of Frisians and Warians are also attested in these Saxon districts. A second possible solution is that these Angles of Ptolemy are not those of Schleswig at all. According to Julius Bacorni, the Angri and Angri Varii, the Angri and Hardanger and the Angel and Angliae all come from the same root meaning bent, but in different senses. In other words, the similarity of the Nemesis is strictly coincidental and does not reflect any ethnic unity beyond Germanic. However, Goodman Chuda, in his analysis of Ptolemy, believes that the Angles have simply been moved by an error coming from Ptolemy's use of imperfect sources. He points out that Angles are placed correctly just to the northeast of the Langobardi, but that these have been duplicated, so that they appear once, correctly, on the Lower Elba, and a second time, incorrectly, at the Northern Rhine. Bede states that the Angliae, before coming to Great Britain, dwelt in a land called Angulus, which lies between the province of the Jutes and the Saxons, and remains unpopulated to this day. Similar evidence is given by the Historia Britannum. King Alfred the Great and the chronicler Ethelbert identified these places with Anglia, in the province of Schleswig, Schleswig, though it may then have been of greater extent, and this identification agrees with the indications given by B. In the Norwegian seafarer Odhir of Halo Gallen's account of a two day voyage from the Oslo Fjord to Schleswig, he reported the lands on his starboard bow, and Alfred appended the note on these islands dwelt the Angle before they came hither. Confirmation is afforded by English and Danish traditions relating to two kings named Wormund and Offa of Angel, from whom the Mercian royal family claim descent and whose exploits are connected with Anglia, Schleswig, and Rendsborg. Danish tradition has preserved record of two governors of Schleswig father and son, in their service, Frauenus, Brewine, and Wigo Wig, from whom the royal family of Wessex claimed descent. During the 5th century, the Anglii invaded Great Britain, after which time their name does not recur on the continent except in the title of the legal code issued to the Thuringians, Lex Anglorum et Werenorum Hake Thuringorum. The Angles are the subject of a legend about Pope Gregory I, who happened to see a group of Angle children from Dara for sale as slaves in the Roman market. As the story would later be told by the Anglo Saxon monk and historian Bede, Gregory was struck by the unusual appearance of the slaves and asked about their background. When told they were called Angliae, Angles, he replied with a Latin pun that translates well into English, Beni, nam et angelicum habent facium, et tales angelorum and chalice deset esicoherds, it is well, for they have an angelic face and such people ought to be co-heirs of the angels in heaven. Supposedly, this encounter inspired the Pope to launch a mission to bring Christianity to their countrymen. The province of Schleswig has proved rich in prehistoric antiquities that date apparently from the 4th and 5th centuries. A large cremation cemetery has been found at Borgstedt, between Rendsburg and Eckenforda, and it has yielded many urns and brooches closely resembling toes found in pagan graves in England. Of still greater importance are the great deposits at Thorsberg Moor, in Anglia, and Nidham, which contain larger quantities of arms, ornaments, articles of clothing, agricultural implements, etc., and in Nidham, even ships. By the help of these discoveries, Angle culture in the age preceding the invasion of Britannia can be pieced together. According to sources such as the History of Bede, after the invasion of Britannia, the Angles split up and founded the kingdoms of Northumbria, East Anglia, and Mercia. H. R. Loin has observed in this context that a sea voyage is perilous to tribal institutions, and the apparently tribe-based kingdoms where he formed in England. Early times had two northern kingdoms, Bernicia and Dara, and two midland ones, Middle Anglia and Mercia, which had by the 7th century resolved themselves into two Angle kingdoms, viz., Northumbria and Mercia. Northumbria held suzerainty amidst the Teutonic presence in the British Isles in the 7th century, but was eclipsed by the rise of Mercia in the 8th century. Both kingdoms fell in the great assaults of the Danish Viking armies in the 9th century. Their royal houses were effectively destroyed in the fighting, and their Angle populations came under the Dane law. Further south, the Saxon kings of Wessex withstood the Danish assaults. Then in the late 9th and early 10th centuries, the kings of Wessex defeated the Danese and liberated the Angles from the Danelaw. They united their house in marriage with the surviving Angle royalty, and were accepted by the Angles as their kings. This marked the passing of the old Anglo-Saxon world and the dawn of the English as a new people. The regions of East Anglia and Northumbria are as still known by their original titles. Northumbria once stretched as far north as what is now southeast Scotland, including Edinburgh, and as far south as the Humber estuary. 
The rest of that people stayed at the center of the Angle homeland in the northeastern portion of the modern German Bundesland of Schleswig-Holstein, on the Jutland Peninsula. There, a small peninsular area is still called Anglia today and is formed as a triangle drawn roughly from modern Flensburg on the Flensburger Fjord to the city of Schleswig and then to Mausum, on the Schleienlet. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.